Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another Around the World with Anne and John. We are Anne and John, uh, John Cinnamon and Craig Cinnamon. Uh, for those of you who may or uh, may not know who we are, uh, longtime broadcasters in the Indianapolis, Indiana area and uh, in the uh, travel business now. And have been for quite a few years, and that's because of our passion for travel. We have been to, I've been to 112 countries, uh, and John, not too far behind me. Mm -hmm. All seven continents, all 50 states, and of course, no one's going anywhere right now. And, and so that's kind of why we're here tonight, is to uh, get you up to speed on the latest uh, travel news. We'll have an interview with uh, one of our favorite uh, tour guides from the past, Ayman Katab. He uh, lives in Amman, Jordan. And uh, he, uh, again, we, we had just a, a great tour, whole week in Jordan with him six years ago. So we're going to visit with him and see how life is uh, over there. Uh, afterwards, then, we've decided that we're going to uh, get all liquored up again. Last yeah. time, it was... Um, it was the... Uh, uh, oh, oh the Rocky. Yeah, from Turkish Turkey. Rocky. And this time... Is Riga Black Balsam from yeah. Latvia. It's their and national That drink. one, we haven't even opened yet. Yeah. So... So there you go. So this will be a first uh, first test uh, on that. Mm -hmm. um, if you have questions, travel questions, we would love to answer them. So go ahead and start posting questions and we'll answer as we go along as well. And um, if you do know anybody who's interested in travel, share this as well. And of course, this will be uh, recorded and put back up and we'll put it on YouTube and all kinds of stuff. And we'll give us, give us some likes and loves too. Oh, would you show please, us some love? Please. So, uh, oh, and we may um, show a little bit of one of our favorite trips. Yes. If we have time. But of course we have time because <laughs> where's anybody going anymore? <laughs> and how long is it going to take before we can? So that's what we'll address first. All right. So air traffic, um, TSA. Um, TSA, of course, uh, usually uh, at this time of year, at any time of year, every day, is screening literally two and a half million people per day to get on a flight. That would be the normal amount. That's your normal. It has been well under 100,000, and it reached its high recently since March. Uh, I believe the highest amount was March 29th until April 30th. It took a whole month to rebound, and it's now at about 155,000 per day. So that gives you an indication of how few people are flying. That's around this country. Um, another thing with TSA, they may start taking temperatures. That may be oh, one good. of the things that they start doing. The TSA isn't invasive enough. So now they're going to start well, taking your temperatures. You know how they, they um, do body cavity searches and that kind of thing. Well, this would be a different kind of, not that kind of temperature check. Oh, I'm mistaken. What the? <laughs> so anyway, uh, they may be doing that. And then um, Southwest Airlines CEO Gary Kelly was on Face the Nation last Sunday, and he was asked if he thinks it's safe to fly again. And of course, he's going to say yes, but he did say yes. And he um, he also started talking about um, how you know they have new procedures in cleaning and sanitizing aircraft and social distancing and requirements that everybody wear, wears masks. Mm -hmm. Many will be doing that. But that is your Southwest guy, and he thinks that it is safe to fly even now. So they're going to distribute masks along with the peanuts on Southwest? Isn't that what they were known for? <laughs> well, anybody with peanut allergy then has uh, uh, the ability oh, to okay. put the mask on. All and, right. So there you go. It's got a double. It's a win-win <laughs> for everybody. Uh, let's look at uh, the cruising industry, uh, starting with ocean cruises. Uh, earlier this week, I think it was on Tuesday, there was a, a, a story going around that Norwegian Cruise Line were, might have to file for bankruptcy. Well, that was apparently either overblown or they got themselves out of it. The very next day, Norwegian Cruise Lines announced they got uh, more than $2 billion uh, worth of uh, funding. So that's, sh they're saying that, so that, that should be enough. So that keeps them afloat for a while. I see what you did there. So that should, uh, yes, keep them going for at least another year. Uh, also, Carnival Cruise Lines announced mm -hmm. that they will officially start cruising again August first that is the hope certainly but i think that is a probably an, maybe a reachable goal yeah. i think uh by the way back to norwegian for a second their ceo did say that they will sail again this year in 2020 uh royal caribbean princess they have extended a little bit their pause in cruising but uh yeah they're 
hoping to get out. All of them did. I mean, Princess just did it again, like yesterday or the day before, mm -hmm. um, extending it into some for the rest of the uh, year, some for, you know, the through the summer. Right. But they all have this guarantee. They all got some sort of. Yeah, it's guarantee. some version of cruise with confidence that if you book, say, you know, a cruise for either later this year or early next year, whenever, uh, once you've booked, you could still. If you wanted to, within 48 hours of cruising, you could cancel your cruise or rebook it and rebook still it. get, yeah, still get the uh, yeah. future cruise. River cruising, which is hugely popular now, is kind of a different animal um, because they're more like um, a hotel that moves along <laughs> with you yeah. and gets off every day and that kind of thing. Um, that they um, a lot of the river cruises uh, cruise lines, of course, are, are starting to work on how they're going to bring people on board again. Um, they think uh, that the way meals are taken will be changed, how tours are operated, even how you impact with each other, probably how you're seated at dinner because it used to always be open seating. Um, breakfasts and lunches were, were buffets, and that's probably not going to to be the case. They may be um, screening also temperatures and that kind of thing as you board. Um, contactless payment options, but how they, um, being smaller and all, how they set things up may sort of give us an indication of how ocean cruising will go too. Uh, I think that they have a, the opportunity maybe to, to to figure it out as a smaller cruise, how they're going to you know handle things. And I'm really curious how well. they're going to handle the, the dinner seating because, That's gonna be you know, frankly, when we cruise, We'll take a table for two, please. <laughs> so it's not that much of an issue. But you know, as you, if you've been on a cruise before, you know that they'll seat you at a table for six or eight yeah. or ten with other people. And so, one of the river cruises uh, that was quoted in this story that that um, I have here uh, on the waterways, they say that 2021 bookings are very hot. So people, there is a pent up demand. Um, quickly, Disney. Uh, yes, the uh, Orange County. This is we're talking about Florida now. Orange County uh, Economic Task Force has issued preliminary, preliminary guidelines for phased-in reopenings of the Florida theme parks, mostly Disney and Universal. Uh, phase one would be 50% capacity. Phase two, 75% capacity. Uh, Disney Springs at Disney World, formerly uh, Downtown Disney, mm -hmm. that is actually set to open later this month which i think means that you know once they start that then probably the park will open fairly soon yeah. disneyland whole different animal because yeah. it's california mm -hmm. disney shanghai is opening soon so that is actually a good sign and then hotels they're all you know having to figure out how what they're going to do and um, they say it's going to be a lot of enhanced technology that they're going to roll out over the next few months uh electrostatic sprayers with hospital grade disinfectant to sanitize, I know, to sanitize surfaces and guest rooms and and that kind of thing. You know, washing the the bedspreads would be a good place to start. <laughs> just, you go in there with the black light, and you yeah. just you don't want to you don't want to see any of that. Uh, okay, so uh, one of our favorite trips ever yeah. was uh, what like six years ago. We toured Jordan. We went all over the country of Jordan um, through a company called G Adventures. And Iman, shown here, I believe we're at Petra there, um, it was our guide. And he does the National Geographic tours in Jordan for G Adventures. Mm -hmm. And he is just a, he's a, a great guide. Uh, we had such a wonderful time with him. And we talked to him uh, via Zoom earlier this week. Uh, tell us how things are in, in Jordan in general, and for you in particular. Yeah, well, we are really doing good, but uh, I, I just said the sirens went off. We are having this curfew um, for more than uh, 10 hours every day. So now we are not allowed to go out from now, from 6 p.m. until tomorrow, 8 a.m. We are wow. not allowed to go out. Wow, well, and how long, so, has that uh, been, uh, how long has that been the case? Um, since the very beginning, three months ago, um, we started like, you know, full time curfew, like every day for almost two weeks. And then now we are having it only for 10 hours every day, which is really a lot. People are really upset. We are not, um, 
you know, we lost our freedom. You can do anything. You can go out whenever you want to go. Right. Many people lost their jobs in Jordan. We are going through really difficult times, mm -hmm. um, especially tourism section. All hotels, many hotels shut down. Many travel agencies shut down. Many restaurants stopped working. Tour guides, of course, we have no work anymore, you know. And we are hoping that this will end. We will start working again, maybe in three or four months. Uh, uh, long? But, oh. Three or four months? Wow. Yeah, yeah. G Adventures, we stopped operating. Uh, worldwide, we stopped operating. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in direct contact with, uh, with, with my manager and with the base camp, which is in Toronto. Right. And they keep saying it's going to be difficult for you guys. Like, uh, you won't have work, but we will start sending people maybe end of September, maybe end of October. So that's a lot of bad news. But then we asked Iman about why people would want to go to Jordan. So Jordan is one of those countries that I would say it's very easy to travel to. People highly educated, English widely spoken in the country. Answer your question, and why Jordan is a must to visit? Because everything started from here, Jordan and Israel. I would combine actually Jordan with Israel. Um, our history in Jordan related to the Old Testament. Wadi so, Rum, um, Wadi Rum in Jordan. Literally, Moses traveled through Wadi Rum right there exactly exactly and apart from that like wadi rum i think there is nowhere on earth like wadi rum right um i'm talking about i'm talking about uh wadi rum you know landscape and nature yeah it's, it's it's very different than anywhere on earth have you watched the martian yes yes uh-huh it was mars martian? It was the martian yeah, yeah. 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 One of my all time favorite things that we've ever done on a trip was in Wadi Rum with you. You took a bunch of us out in the desert that night under a full moon in the dark, and we went out to one of the, the rock formations. Just a rock formation. And sat out there yeah. and you made tea for us all and, we all. and you gave us candles, and we put the candles on the rock, and we sat out there for an hour or whatever, just sort of. Uh, mesmerized by by the surroundings and then walked back to our to our camp and as you got further out you turn around and look and the candles were still burning on the it was on the it was one of the most uh beautiful mystical spiritual things awesome. we've, we've ever experienced oh. and it was that's just awesome. amazing that's awesome that's awesome and then there's petra yeah, tell us about petra going. petra is petra is an all-time great archaeological site Exactly. So Petra, uh, there's also nowhere. It's it's very well hidden city, and Petra in the old days. Uh, when I saw in the old days, I'm talking about 2,400 years ago, wow. and it was one of the main stops for all caravans back in the old days, traveling towards Europe and towards Africa. Mm -hmm. And these people lived in Petra, the Nabataean, Bedouin tribe. You saw all these different tombs, uh -huh. how they carved the whole city, all, all what you saw carved in the mountains. Right. It means they were artists. And you face, you remember, if you remember the treasury, oh. the treasury is the yeah. most beautiful after walking in through this very narrow gorge, the canyon. Mm -hmm. 1200 meters long and by the end you face the most beautiful monument the treasury yes. it took it's from them according to the yeah. and now what's happening in these three months now until we start working again they started uh, to excavate the site hmm. so they started yeah. to dig in front of the treasury for three months hoping that we're gonna find more well, wow. and, and hopefully that's the bright side that, you know, it's it's terrible that you don't have tourists and can't have tourists right now, but maybe there will be even more to see. 
but yeah, I'm, 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 to be honest, I'm, 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 um, I'm kind of optimistic about the whole thing. I'm sure. Right. I mean, travel is very important. I mean, travel will never die. Travel will get sick from time to time, but will never die. Right. So okay. now, but I believe um, next year going to be amazing year for all of us Good. people in this field. Um, well, we certainly uh, hope so, and, and we hope you're doing okay. I mean, we are okay. We are okay. Right. We will survive. We will survive these three, four, five, six months, and then we'll start again. Well, I yeah. like your optimism, and <laughs> we'll have to come back and, and tour with you again. I would love to see Jordan again. It was one of our favorites ever. Yes. And a lot because of you. In private, guys. Anytime you want to come, just let me know. You have a place where you stay, you have a car, all what you need. <laughs> it will be great to see you all again, John and Anne. You are great lovely. To you. I'm, I'm great to talk to you. Great to see you. Great to Good see you. Good luck. Take care of yourself, and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All the best. You know, one of the most fun things about travel is meeting people like him. Oh, yeah. He was great. And it's great to catch up with, with them. And, you know, we talked to Rachel a couple of weeks ago and Donald mm -hmm. from Madagascar and I'm in now. Right? Uh, it's and, just cool to keep in touch with people from around the world. Yeah. One of the uh, highlights of the uh, Jordan tour was something that uh, uh, Iman would do. He took us up to a little perch, as you can see here, above the treasury building. And you look down on it, and it wasn't exactly um, a regular path either. We had to <laughs> make our way up there. It was kind I of think, dangerous. I think he called it the illegal he did. route. Yeah, yeah. So it's time to get liquored up. What do you think? Yes. All right. It's always time to get liquored up. And this week we're going to sample some Riga Black Balsam. Uh, this is... Uh, Tell us about Black Balsam. Black Balsam, uh, the original recipe was created in 1752 by Ooh. a pharmacist living in Riga. Which means it's going to taste like medicine. I think back <laughs> then the pharmacist was also the barber. So... So thank you, Theodoric, for, uh, and by the way, balsam, the, here? the uh, balsam, uh, this, uh, the Riga Black Balsam, is just a mix of a bunch of stuff, uh, uh, raspberries, birch buds, bitter root, root, uh, uh, St. John's wort, that's yes, St. John's depression. wort, peppermint leaves, uh, black pepper, uh, they say that black balsam is also used in traditional medicine, so this is probably good for COVID-19, we'll oh, find yeah. out. Um, there I go again, being inappropriate. I'm Cut sorry. It out. Now, so straight up black balsam is pretty bitter, but this is flavored. This is current flavored. <laughs> okay, that just cleared my sinuses. That wasn't too bad. Let's try this because we don't have this. This is it's the, the Riga Black Balsam cream liqueur. Okay. I have high hopes for this because I'm uh -huh. guessing oh it's going to be gosh, like a. Uh, not too much. Not too much. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's probably going to be. I'm hoping. Like kind of like a Bailey's, Bailey's Irish, Irish cream. cream. We'll see how this goes. Okay. Oh, that's oh really yeah. Good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think I remember now why we bought this. Oh, that we is sampled really it. good. We sampled it there and. That is really oh, really good. Yeah. Next time we have company, you know, two years from now, we'll have to serve that. <laughs> we'll, put, so. we'll pour glasses full and leave it on the front porch for our friends to come by. And, come on by. We got a couple of glasses on the street. Yeah. So, okay. Um, Remember, if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments <laughs> section as you're uh, watching. Yes. And uh, in the meantime, we do have a couple questions here. So, Bob. Wants to know, he says, I'm sure there will be some pent up demand and the folks will want to go cruising again soon. But what are the cruise companies doing to lure people back on board? Special deals, perks. I've looked at some cruises on the company websites for next year and they all seem to have gone up in price quite a bit. And so um, I think that they're also very concerned right now about getting everybody rebooked and and yeah. they're still getting their their all of their uh, schedules adjusted and that kind of thing. And I'm sure, and, and I know they are looking towards 2021. And I also know that um, their the bookings are high, but I would say, and I, and this is my prediction along with um, the airlines, they, you may not see some great deals because all these companies are kind of in trouble and Plus, they're not going to, what you're going to say, go ahead. It's the, as he said, it's the pent up demand, oh, the whole that. supply and demand thing. If a lot of people are just, 
itching to get out of their houses and travel again, uh -huh. then they're, they may be willing to pay the price. But the other thing that I was going to say was they're going to have fewer people on all of these planes and ships and that kind of thing. So the pricing prices may not go down because you're gonna to have to make up for the fact that they're, they're not going with a full load maybe. But you so, will have the benefit of being able to mm -hmm. social distance mm -hmm. if that's the case. Exactly, and that's to make us all feel safe enough to go, that may be the price we pay, mm -hmm. which is a higher price. So right. I don't know. Uh, there are deals, all the ones that do things like Norwegian has packages and, and Princes will have drink packages and all of that. They're, they are offering those now. Mm -hmm. And so those are kind of their, the amenities, the perks. Sure. We have another question. Uh, yes, this is from Dave A. You probably know who you are. Uh, he asked if there was any place, knowing that we have traveled pretty extensively, well over 100 countries, is there a destination on our bucket list that we have not been to There's, yet? There, I do have, it's kind of an extreme bucket list. I do have one, but... Um, I would say that the one place I really want to go that we have not been yet and is not planned yet, we've got three trips planned, mm -hmm. um, is the Arctic. Now, we have done Norway, but not above the Arctic Circle. And been to and Iceland. Iceland, but not got real close to it. But I'm talking Greenland, and I'm talking sailing through and doing Svalbard in Norway and that whole thing. And seeing polar bears. We've seen penguins in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. I think we'd like to see polar bears and yes. whatever else there is not, in the Arctic. Right. We've not seen polar bears um, other than, you know, the zoo. Right. Big one. So um, in any event, this stuff was really good. I you want some more? No, no, no. I'm going to finish this. Later. But are we going to, are we going to, um, let's, why don't we um, do our Himalayas trip? Yes. Uh, speaking of uh, bucket lists, this was one from two years two ago. Two years ago, right now. I believe, no, were we back by then? Probably just got back. Mm -hmm. And what we did was um, we flew into Kathmandu, and then we flew from Kathmandu into Lukla, Nepal, which has the most dangerous airport in the world. That's right. And this is the trail just outside Lukla as you're heading toward. If people, when people go to Mount Everest, this is the path they take. This is just outside Lukla, uh, Nepal, just a beautiful valley along the uh, path there. Also, you cross a lot of these uh, wire Suspension bridges. bridges. And look at, look how high you are. Look at that beautiful water. Th this is probably one of the cleanest places we've ever been in terms of clean air, clean water. Um, this was one of the tea houses that we stayed in along the way. And, Small, uh -huh. cozy. Yeah. This one was pretty good. This, was this wasn't too up. bad. Had a really nice view. And the bathroom was in in our room. It was en suite. Yes, there you go. Um, you can see me sitting there taking a break. And look at this this poor man. Just when He's you think porter. you're having a hard time just yeah. walking, there are these porters, many of them are Sherpas, that are carrying supplies that have been flown into Lukla, and they're carrying them to Namchi Bazaar. And Namchi Bazaar is the city that every little town, very colorful, very, very interesting. Um, and it's the town that everybody goes through. If you're going to base camp, you go there. And here is... We got to um, Namchi Bazaar. We, we are standing at the very spot. That's our guide pram in the yellow, yellow hat. hat. And these are the Himalayas. And in a moment, you'll see Mount Everest again. This They're is uh, again. this is Sagarmatha National Park. Sagarmatha is the Nepalese name for Mount Everest. And you see the peak of Mount Everest out there. You'll see it up closer here sooner. There you go. That is the peak of Mount Everest. And it took us two days of climbing to get to this point that we can see Mount Everest, if we wanted to go on to base camp, which we did not, it would have taken us another five days, another five days of uphill climbing. So that just gives you an idea how long it takes. And that's just a base camp. And then um, we went back down and down is not really down there. Down is kind of up and down up and, and up down, and down right. and up and down. These Cheers. are just some of the pictures of the, the places people, people and we took along there's the There's an Amchi Bazaar. And, um, but it, it took us another two days to get back down. I fell on the way down, and I have the scar on my knee to prove it. One of her favorite souvenirs ever, a scar, scar on her knee. knee. But it was an all-time great trip and um, hard. But sometimes the hard ones are the most rewarding because you really work for them and you earn them. 
and you see things that you never believed you could ever see mm -hmm. and it, and meet and you people. do things you thought you'd never be able to do true and that's why travel is such a wonderful thing because you learn so much and as i always say it brings history alive it makes geography personal and it's a cultural bridge because you meet all these people and um we, we kind of like to think of ourselves i think when we travel as ambassadors mm -hmm. for our country and yeah. you know that sort of thing so um we uh appreciate you watching please share this with any of your friends that's that right like to travel. uh this will uh, go up again uh, be available to, to watch later tell your friends they can watch it uh, on uh, Anne's facebook page we'll be sharing the crap out of this all over the place so again thanks for watching Anne and john around the world and we'll catch you next time bye take care